Hello everyone, Grandpa Ron here again. Hope you're all well and happy. Today we're going to get back into our very basic Bible study with chapter 36 of Genesis. This is going to be a real short one today because chapter 36 is a, uh, an account of the genealogies of Esau. And you know how I butcher names, and this is chock full of names. So we're not going to go verse by verse. I'm going to uh, hit some of the high spots, and um, uh, that'll, that'll get us ready for the, the next lesson. But uh, uh, we'll, we'll just go through here, and I'll make some comments on a few key things, and uh, we'll try to keep it short. Chapter 36, verse 1. Now these are the records of the generations of Esau, that is Edom. Now Edom refers to his, uh, remember he was uh, red, red skin color, and uh, he also liked that red porridge. And uh, if you remember, he traded his birthright for a bowl of red porridge. Jacob uh, tricked him. And Jacob also deceived and got his blessing as well. But um, these are the records of Esau, Jacob's brother. Verse 2. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Ada the daughter of Ellen the Hittite, and Oholibama the daughter of Anna, and the granddaughter of Zibion the Hivite. Well, if you remember back, this really displeased his parents uh, because uh, the Hivites and the Hittites were not part of the chosen line. Remember, God had entered into a covenant uh, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that he was going to give them the promised land, he was going to multiply their descendants, and ultimately, and most importantly, uh, the whole world, all the nations of the world, would be blessed through their line. And, uh, of course, that blessing is uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came to uh, die for man's sins and uh, serve as Savior of all mankind, the, the Savior of the world, for those that believe in him. And uh, the, these wives that Esau took were not part of that, uh, that chosen line, that chosen lineage. And it kind of demonstrated that Esau didn't have a heart for God. He, he didn't care anything about that, just like he didn't care about his birthright and his blessing until it was too late. And so uh, uh, this is something to note here. Okay. Then if we jump down to verse 6, it says, Esau took his wives and his sons and his daughters and all his household and his livestock and all his cattle and all his goods which he had acquired in the land of Canaan and went to another land away from his brother Jacob. Well, we saw this before where Lot uh, moved away and separated because uh, there just wasn't enough uh, pasture land for the cattle. And now Esau's separating by moving off into a different land. They probably felt like uh, the grass was greener on a, over, on a different land as well. And getting as far away from Jacob as he can. And it's uh, kind of interesting to note that uh, uh, Esau's descendants were born in the promised land and he moved and they moved out. And uh, as we've seen, Jacob uh, descendants were born outside the promised land and they moved back in. So, kind of interesting. Esau moves out. Verse 7 explains it like uh, I just mentioned. For their property had become too great for them to live together and the land where they sojourned could not sustain them because of their livestock. So he had to move to a whole different area. The next interesting thing is down in verse 15 we see the term chiefs used. It said, these are the chiefs of the sons of Esau. Now, 
as Esau's descendants multiplied, you had these different family groups, and those family groups grew, and pretty soon they would have a chief, somebody in charge of that particular clan. And so we see the chiefs. But then further down, when we get to verse 31, it says, Now these are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the sons of Israel. So they continue to grow and grow and grow and grow, and pretty soon some of these clans and groups of clans are big enough to actually have a king. Now the, these are smaller groups than you would think of as a you know, the king of England or France or something like that, but still, they were large enough to have a uh, high-ranking king over them. At the same time, Jacob, now Israel, his descendants haven't grown at this pace. Uh, we're going to see later one reason why is there was a famine in the land. They initially... Uh, go to Egypt for food. We'll get into that neat story next time. But eventually they become uh, enslaved by the Egyptians. And this lasted for hundreds of years. And so there was no king over the nation of Israel because they were captives. But Esau and his lineage, they, they flourished and multiplied and actually uh, grew to the point where um, they had quite the uh, political clout. They actually had kings. Well, let's see. More, there's more uh, lineage here. So-and-so begot so-and-so, so-and-so begot so-and-so. And, -so. and um, that's how the chapter ends, just going through all this lineage. Well, the, the significance of this chapter is that in the future, we're going to see down the road that the descendants of Esau, the Edomites, become a pain in the neck, a thorn in the side of Israel and his descendants for hundreds and hundreds of years. Or you could say even down to today. And so uh, it, it was important to show this lineage to prepare us for what we're going to see uh, down the road. But that's the book, that's the chapter uh, 36 and the significance of it. And we're going to pick up next time and see what happens to Jacob, now Israel, uh, and what happens to his descendants. And we're going to get, in, they're going to get involved with Egypt and uh, it's going to be quite an interesting story. History is going to uh, accelerate for us. So even though short, I hope this was interesting to you. And I uh, hope you'll watch the next one. In the meantime, God bless, and we'll see you then. Thanks. Bye-bye.